So in The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, there is a great fairy fountain who is going to give you a bunch of upgrades if you give her a bunch of money to give you a bunch of uh, accessory uh, slots. So you can only hold one accessory slot at the beginning of the game, but you can have up to, I think there's like five once we fully upgrade this. I'm also going to show you guys where to get all of the bottles, which is going to hold fairies and all that good stuff as well. So we're going to be getting quite a few different upgrades. It's going to be a lengthy video. Uh, if you do enjoy this one, leave a like, subscribe for more, and let's go ahead and jump straight into this. Now, obviously, mild spoiler, spoiler warnings are going to be shown off the map and things like that, but not going to be giving you guys any kind of story spoilers. So just, uh, yeah, we should be good to go. All right. So for fairy bottle number one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to this location on the map. So once you beat the first dungeon and you unlock the southern village kind of area, there's a cave right here. You can see on this kind of little, little area. If I make my way over to that spot, you can see exactly what the cave looks like. Just head in there. I'm not going to go in there because I've already gotten the bottle. Head to the very, very back and you're just going to get the bottle. It's extremely easy. I don't really need to show you guys that. So that's going to be fairy bottle number one. So for the fairy bottle and number two, we're going to be going to Kakariko Village, which is kind of like northwest of the map. So you can see right up here, go to Kakariko Village. And if we head kind of towards the sort of northwest, I guess, sort of area, you're going to find this lady over here. And she's looking for her cuckoos. It would not be a Zelda game if we didn't have to go search for a bunch of cuckoos, right? So let me go ahead and show you guys exactly where each location of these are. There's going to be five different ones, and some of them might be a little bit tricky for you to find. Uh, so I'll show you guys where they are. So the first one's going to be here. Go ahead. All you're going to want to do is you're going to grab it and you're going to press A to toss it into the fence. So it's going to be number one. You can see number two is actually just kind of sitting right here. Very, very, very easy to find. So that's going to be Kuko number two. And if we head north a little bit, we're going to go ahead and find Kuko number three, which is going to be just kind of chilling over here. So we're going to just throw it in there. Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. Uh, that's going to be number three. Uh, and then we're going to get the last two, which are going to be over here. So we're going to go towards this section area over here. And we're going to actually climb up onto this uh, windmill here. You might already see it there kind of hanging out. And that's going to be on top of the windmill. And uh, you're going to have to probably actually just kind of jump off like this and kind of float off. And let's go toss it back into the, uh, into the pen. And then just down here, uh, kind of to the south, sort of, of where she was, is going to be the last one. Go ahead, throw the last one in, and she's going to go ahead and give you the second fairy bottle. And that's pretty much going to be that, my friends. So for the third fairy bottle, we're going to be going over to Seaside Village, which is right here, kind of in the Zora area. Uh, area. Make sure you've done everything that you have to do with the dungeon and stuff uh, in order for this guy to show up. But right here, you can see it, there's like a little boat right here. And right on top of it, there's going to be this guy kind of hanging out here. And he's going to start off this quest that is going to uh, initiate and we're going to have to go ahead and do that. So go ahead, talk to him, do all that good stuff. And again, if he's not here for some reason, just go ahead, do another dungeon until you see him kind of uh, hanging out on top of this boat right here, just at the entrance of Seaside. So going from his location, we're actually just going to be going down to the kind of southwestern uh, sort of area. Once you just kind of go down here, you're going to find a shipwrecked boat uh, that's just going to be kind of hanging out right here. So right there, you can see it's just kind of hanging out. We're going to go up here and we're going to open it up like this. And then we're going to go inside and we're going to do everything that we need to do inside this boat before returning back to that gentleman. So I'm not going to show you what happens inside of the ship because it's basically like a little mini side dungeon with a little kind of boss at the end and whatnot. So anyways, just go through it. It's very, very easy to get through. Not too long, 10, 15 minutes if you're, you know, well equipped. Anyways, once you've completed the dungeon, you've done the boss and all that, you just come out of it it's like a dungeon and you go talk to the uh, the guy again. and He's going to give you your uh, your fairy bottle and that's going to be number uh, number three. Now, there is a fourth one, but let's just keep that one for later because you, you're you not going to be able to unlock it until later in the game anyway. So let's just kind of do the thing a little bit more chronological as we go through this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our upgrades from the Great Fairy, but she's gonna want a lot of money. We're gonna need 1,900 rupees. So the best way to get that is just kind of farm uh, amiibo scans. If you have any of the Zelda amiibos, at least three of them, you can just keep scanning them over and over again. So what we're gonna be doing is we're basically gonna go to our system. We're gonna go to amiibo. Once we scan them three times, it's gonna say daily limit is reached. We're gonna go down to our system settings. So we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go all the way down to system. We're gonna go all the way down to date and time. We're gonna turn off synchronized clock. We're just gonna put the day ahead 
head one day and then we're gonna be able to rinse and repeat scanning the amiibo and the reason we're gonna do that is it's gonna give us a bunch of ingredients and then we can sell the ingredients at any shop or even a smoothie location you could make smoothies if you want maybe sell them a little bit more but it's probably just easier to just sell you know just the ingredients so you're gonna stack you know as much you know as many ingredients as you're basically getting and then uh sell them off as you see fit for a bunch of money i already got 2600 so i'm not gonna do that but if you need rupees that's the fastest way to earn rupees okay so now that you have 1900 rupees we're gonna go ahead we're gonna go to the great fairy and i'll show you guys exactly where to go for that right now so if you go to lake hylia right in the kind of dead middle right here there's going to be this little spot here now again keep in mind if there's any kind of you know gunk around any of the the rift stuff uh you can actually go to the big rifts like this one right here if you go to like the bottom of it usually there's like a little entrance you can go in and clear it out and whatnot so we're gonna go in here this is gonna be where the great fairy fountain is gonna be you see on the cave it actually has a couple uh fairies right there and if you actually go up to these fairies you can see they're just gonna bottle them and you're pretty much gonna be good to go but if you actually go up to the you know fountain itself we're going to see that the great fairy is going to go ahead and spawn out of the uh the fountain and uh we're gonna go ahead and be able to interact with the fairy and again she's going to basically ask for a bunch of money and just give you a bunch of dialogue and we're going to go ahead and do that so let's go do that one at a time show you guys how much every single accessory uh upgrade is going to cost so when you get to this part of the dialogue just click make me more stylish and um, when you do that basically uh she's going to say i'm not going to do it for free gonna have to cost some money uh how about 100 rupees so the first one is gonna cost 100 rupees she adores rupees she's greedy she's money hungry <laughs> but hey i guess uh i don't know what she's doing with rupees but whatever she's gonna do her little misty thing and basically that's gonna give you your upgrade your accessory limit has been raised by one what that means is you can wear more accessories and there's a bunch of accessories and they stack so you're gonna want to do that so again we're gonna do this a second time if you do it a second time it's gonna cost us 300 rupees if we do it three times, the third one's going to cost 500 rupees. So they're getting more and more expensive, as you can see. The fourth one is going to be a thousand rupees. She says, this will have to be the last time. So I must insist on 1,000 rupees. And just like that, I'm pretty broke. I'm well, not broke. I got 700 more still. But anyways. So now, as you can see, there are five total accessory slots. Again, we already had one. But now we can increase that even more. So, you know, I can put that one on. I can put that one on um you know I put whatever i want on which is going to be really really nice you know more materials knockback spin whatever now i got five different accessories completely stacked which is absolutely insane but we're not done yet there's still a few more things to do so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so there's a couple different accessories you can get to make fairy spawn more frequently, which of course is going to help you out. These are all the fairy upgrades, of course, as I said. Now, we're going to need bombs. If you need to get a bomb, uh, you can find like, kind of like around this area here. You're going to be able to find this right here, the zero, 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 zero how you pronounce it. But if you kind of go right here on this location over here, so this is just kind of like sort of just southwest-ish of uh, the spot where you could find one of these zero things. Uh, right on this location, again, if you see, there's kind of like this little lip here and there's a, a warp spot right here if you find it uh there's gonna be a cave right here we're gonna just blow it up we're gonna go inside of the cave and uh what we're gonna find inside of the cave is a treasure chest and in this treasure chest is going to be a flower this flower is called a fairy flower uh and what it's going to do is it's going to make fairies spawn more frequently and now that we have our accessories upgraded where we can hold more stuff we can actually go ahead and slot this in if we would like to just to make fairies spawn a little bit more quickly but if you're a little bit later in the game there is another accessory that'll make it make fairy spawn even more frequently than this one right here the fairy flower fairy flower plus or whatever fragrance plus so for the upgraded fairy kind of accessory, if you will, what we're going to be wanting to do is finish the fair and temple, which again is kind of like a little bit later in the game, kind of the second half of the game. Once you've done that, what we're going to be doing is going to the kind of uh, Deku scrub, scrub ton right here area and right down here, uh, just kind of to the bottom of this kind of square area, you're going to find this, uh, this Deku shrub. We're going to go ahead and talk to this Deku shrub to get this side quest. The side quest called Looking for a Bempu. So with Looking for Bempu, what we're going to be doing is finding him in three different locations. We're just going to go east to where we just were. As you guys can see, I was right there. You can see him hiding in the ground. So you're just going to use the X uh, ability and pull him out of the ground. And it's going to say, hey, you found me. This is going to be the first location. It's going to be three locations. I'll show you guys where the second one's going to be. So for the second location, we're going to go be going to the very bottom left of the 
kind of fair and wetlands area where the little heart is. If the heart's not there, there's actually a rift here you got to complete first, um, which you might have to uh, do. And then you're going to see him kind of hanging out right here at the top left corner of the heart. You can see the heart is kind of right below me. It wouldn't be a Zelda game without a heart pond, right? That's going to be the second location. The third location is going to be right here. So just kind of going where we were, scrub, scrub ton area, north, kind of head around the path over here between these kind of four like brick pillars. You can see them just kind of hanging out right in the middle, dead center of this kind of area with the Deku kind of statues and whatever. That's going to be the third location. Then the fourth and final location is going to be at the bottom right of the Fair and Wetlands kind of right here in this area here. You came here uh, if you did do the uh, the temple, which you would have had to do the temple in order to even unlock the side quest anyway. So you might recognize this kind of area. That's going to be the fourth location. And once you do that, that's going to be it. You're going to be done the side quest and um, you're going to basically basically get the uh, accessory which is going to be even better than the one i just mentioned a second ago so there it is right there we got the fairy fragrance and again this is going to increase the amount of fairies even more than the fairy flower uh, so it's going to give you an even extra kind of bump i'll show you guys really quick in the accessory so this is the fairy flower this is the fairy fragrance you can see the fairy appearance up on this one and then up plus on this one so you'll get even more fairies spawning just randomly and all that good stuff which is a win-win all right so now we're going to be getting the final upgrade this is going to be the might bell accessory and what we're going to want to do is go back to the great fairy and when we go in here you're going to see there's going to be a treasure chest and once we open the treasure chest we're going to get one of these might crystals now what the accessory we're going to be getting is going to allow us to be able to detect might crystals that are nearby which is going to be good because you need might crystals basically to upgrade all of your gear uh, that has to do with the energy bar right of course your sword and all the other stuff like that um, you know the level of your energy and all that good stuff so anyways once you open up the chest you're basically going to be talking to the fairy the fairy's going to go through this whole thing and it's going to start this whole other quest line again this is going to be a side quest it's going to be called the great fairy request she's looking for a pendant we got to bring her a pendant it's this whole thing that we're gonna have to do again see right here the great fairies request uh let's go ahead and show you guys how to get that done so it is worth noting that this quest will not show up until you're done the elden volcano uh dungeon and if it's still not popping up just do another dungeon until it does pop up but what we're going to be doing is going to the gerudo desert after that gerudo town right here we're going to be going to the shop we're going to go ahead inside the shop and what we're going to be doing is speaking to the shop owner which is uh going to basically progress this whole quest we're going to be explaining what we need because the shop owner in the gerudo town makes accessories of course so we're going to go through this she's going to tell us exactly what to do but i'm going to skip through this and i'm going to tell you guys how to get it done okay so there are two items that we're going to have to get the first one here is going to be the magma stones we're going to be going to of course the elden volcano as you guys can see right here we're going to be going to the town, Goron City. We're going to make our way up here and into this room. Once we go into this building right here, we're going to over go over to the back left room uh, over here. And once we go in here, we're actually going to be finding a shop owner and we're going to have to talk to him. So we're going to go to the back here. We're going to talk to him. If, we, if you go to the front of it, you're just going to end up trying to buy stuff. So don't do that. So go ahead, talk to him. He's going to tell you what to do. We basically have to go to the Lizalfo's borough. Again, if you've already done the elden temple which you should have done to be able to do this um you'll know exactly where that is which is just kind of north right here we've already done this before and we're gonna unfortunately have to do this again so once you get to this location right here we're just going to make our way up here we're going to enter this little cave right here once we get in there we're just going to make our way through it it's pretty much linear so just make your way through the entire lizalfos burrow killing any lizalfos that you see along the way and then make your way to the very last room so this is going to be the final room right here thankfully i have a lionel that does quick work on these lizalfos basically like two hits them once you've completed you know killing them all i was gonna say shooting them all we're not really shooting anything you're gonna see the uh goron guy kind of uh pop up he's gonna just gonna go, go through a little bit of dialogue and whatnot and uh, he's gonna says i'm gonna go get those mag magma stones for you and great awesome thank you i really appreciate it because i uh, really need it there you guys have it we have the magma stones and now we have uh, one other item to get which we're going to be heading over to the zora region next so let's go ahead and do that all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go north of where the C zora village is right here in cross flow cross flows plaza whatever it's called you can go anywhere that has a smoothie shop uh 
It doesn't have to be a specific one, of course. And we're going to say, hey, I want to make a smoothie. We're going to have to make a smoothie that is going to be just uh, not good. It's going to be unfortunate smoothie. One of the ways to do that is refreshing grapes with a monster fang. Again, you want a uh, unfortunate smoothie, one that's basically bad. And we're going to need that for the quest. It's just to save you time so we don't have to run back and forth, back and forth. Go ahead. Make this smoothie first, and then we can head over to the uh, Sea Azora Cave, which is just going to be just south of this uh, smoothie guy right here. So we're going to go down right over here to the Sea Azora Village, so warp your way over there. Once you get here, we're just going to dive in uh, underwater. We're going to head right into this passageway right here. And as soon as we get in here, we're just going to head all the way to the left, and you can see that the... Uh, the person that we need to speak to is, uh, again, another shop owner. So we're going to speak to the shop owner. And uh, basically what they want is they want an unfortunate smoothie. Uh, so we're going ahead. <laughs> we basically tell them, hey, we need this item. Hey, well, all right. Well, you know, uh, I need an unfortunate smoothie, as they just said. But I already have an unfortunate smoothie. And so should you if you followed my instructions. So we're going to go ahead and give the person an unfortunate... Well, it's not really a person. I guess it's a Zora. The unfortunate smoothie. And... Um, they're, they're, they're just, they don't, yeah, it's disgusting. I know. So there we go. We got our second item, the floral seashell. And now we have the, uh, the, the items that we need. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head back to the Gerudo Desert. And we're going to go to the Gerudo shop once again, which is going to be right there. So we're going back into the shop. Once again, again, we're going to be speaking to the shop owner and, uh, give, giving the, the items that we just got. And there you go. We got the beautiful pendant the lovely pendant that we need to bring over to the great fairy so as you guessed it we're going to go back to our map we're going to go all the way back to lake hylia to the great fairy fountain so go ahead and talk to the great fairy and she just kind of knows that we we have it uh again she wanted all our money and now she wants jewelry as well uh once we <laughs> once we go ahead and do that she's going to bestow on us one last gift uh, for us and that is going to be the might bell the might bell which again is going to uh, Basically ring when it senses a might crystal nearby Which is going to help you find these might crystals like I said in order to upgrade all of your gear So if you don't know how to do that uh, You should know how to do that, but basically what you're gonna do. Uh, I'm not gonna go there right now but uh, you're gonna go down to this location right here, kind of northeast of the southern village. This house, Lewberry's house, you have to go, went there either way. In the back right of his house, he has a machine that you can upgrade your stuff. And that's basically what these mite crystals are for. So this bell will just help you find those mite crystals a little bit better. Now, I did say I would show you guys how to get the fourth bottle. Well, basically there's this stamp guy and you can see all of these little diamonds are all the stamp guy locations. So if you wanna screenshot this, right now go ahead and do that i believe there's like 25 or something uh i think it's when you get i think it was like 20 or something uh there's these there's these stamp cards you have to fill out five different stamp stamp cards i think it's like 25 total if i remember correctly um basically once you've completed four of the stamp cards you should get the fourth fairy bottle um and once you've completed all five you're going to get another outfit which is the stamp guy outfit so again you can see all the different diamond locations on my map and that's going to be all the locations for the stamp guy and if you do uh 20 20 of those uh you should get the uh the fourth fairy bottle so i hope this helped you guys out if it did leave a like subscribe for more thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys soon in another one until then game on I'll see you guys later.